Fantastic. I just want to say congratulations on such a great series we want to raise. It's finally aired over here in the UK. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so no more spoilers, thankfully. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. Well, then no spoilers. Because Marvel's crazy about spoilers, and I don't <laughs> yeah. want to give anything up. Okay, good. Right. <laughs> so, first question. How much fun was it to play Janet this season as she got way more involved with the science and, like, tech side of the show? You know, it was so fun. Like, I have to say, first season I loved, and I loved Janet kind of came out of her shell a little bit halfway through season one. But then sec- season two, when Victor was in the tube, she really got to show who she was and it was so fun I mean I love the show and I love this cast so I love it anyway even if I don't have a lot to do in the episodes but I I really I I loved it I loved showing Janet's smarts if you will (laughs) yeah I mean it kind of makes a difference from like last season she was all a little bit shy and obviously Victor was the the main power in the couple wasn't he well yeah I mean she was a little like you know she, she was a little like the uh, b- behind the curtain and this season without Victor there for the beginning anyway, she really got to show her stuff. And in doing that and coming out from behind the curtain, I feel like she got to find her voice too when she, you know, sort of insists to, to Victor and Robert that she wants in on the think tank. Like, I love that. That was one of my favorite scenes. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, how did you first get involved in Marvel and what was your audition like? Because they are very, as you said, very secretive, aren't they? They're so secretive. It's really, yeah, that part was difficult. <laughs> I, um, how did I get involved? You know, I was shooting Handmaid's Tale in Toronto, and I flew home. I had just wrapped the first season of Handmaid's Tale, and I flew home, like, on a, maybe on a Wednesday, and I had the audition waiting for me in my email, and it had a different name. It wasn't called Runaways. It was a, a dummy name. And I think it said it was a Marvel show, but I saw Josh Schwartz and Stephanie Savage, who I've always wanted to work with. So I thought, I'll go in on this mystery project with no information and no script and just two pages of sides. And I went in on Thursday, and then on Friday I tested for the show. And then I think by the following Monday I was at the table read with the whole cast. So it was a very quick. Yeah, very quick turnaround. So did you read the comic book at all? very quick turnaround. (laughs) You know, I didn't. I got the... I got the comic book after I got the job because before I got the job, I didn't know what it was called. I didn't know it was Runaways. <laughs> yeah, I, true. I was just, it was just a bogus name on a, on a sheet of paper. Um, so, yeah, so I got the comic books after. But then I didn't read them all. I just sort of stick to the script and the script story, and then I stick to, you know, I'm, I'm, I have friends who are diehard Runaways fans, so they sort of give me the broad strokes from the comic books. But we've departed from those stories now, so I don't feel like I need them. Yeah. And what is it in being like? What is, uh, what has life been like since you've been in, like, Marvel Universe? Because, you know, have you been to Comic-Con and all, met all the, you know, diehard fans? I haven't been to Comic-Con. I've definitely learned to keep my mouth shut regarding <laughs> any story thing because the Marvel fans are so special and so diehard that if you give them even, like, the smallest kernel, they can probably figure out what the story is. Do you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) I really have just learned to keep my mouth shut or pretend that I've forgotten. (laughs) Um, And then also, you know, with Twitter and Instagram, you get a lot of contact with fans now, and they do these really funny pictures and write nice notes. And I I love the – I feel – I'm so excited. I feel so honored to be in the Marvel family, really. Yeah. And what did you enjoy most about working on Runaways? I mean, it seems like the cast really, really get on. You seem like a really great bunch. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if you've talked to anybody else on our cast, but I will say like Patrick Rush, our casting director, and Josh Schwartz and Stephanie Savage have really put together a group. There's 16 series regulars. And usually when you have that many people, it's fine. Not everybody gets along or maybe you got one or two bad apples maybe and you just sort of do your own thing. But I have to say, like, we have 16 series regulars who all really get along. We really respect each other. We, everybody, while they may work differently, has a very serious work ethic, which is helpful when you're trying to get a lot, a lot of work done in a, in a 12-hour day. Um, so it's been great. It's a great cast. I've never had an experience like this. It does actually really come. It really comes across. So it is pretty good. <laughs> and yeah, I believe that too. I believe that. I believe it translates, and I I can see it. 
especially, you know, we do all these scenes where the pride is together and there's 10 of us in a room and, you know, maybe the scene is three minutes, but it took eight hours to shoot. So you just have to think about spending eight hours in a room with 10 people that someone's usually going to, you know, get grumpy and we all, uh, no, we all take care of each other. It's been great. And those scenes have become some of my, my favorite. Oh, yeah. We've got to talk about that cliffhanger though. I mean, where would you, what were your reactions when you read the script for that episode? Well, I was like a little nervous. You mean the end, the, fi- the finale? Yeah, the final bit. <laughs> yeah, I was a little nervous I wasn't going to have a job. <laughs> no, joke. But a little bit, I was like, we're going to get out of here. They're not going to eat me, are they? Um, I love it. I think it's so great. It's so strong. And I cannot wait. I mean, we're still waiting to hear if we're picked up for season three. But hopefully we are and we'll get to see what happens to all these people. Yeah, definitely. And if you if you do get renewed, which Touchwood, I really hope so, where would you like to see Janet in the next series? You know, I'd like to see Janet pick up where she left off and not regress. I mean, the thing that I loved about the way the season wrapped up is that Janet and Chase are sort of bond together to try to fight. Well, I guess he's not in, entirely Victor. He's like Victor mixed with Jonah. But I, um, I, I love when the characters get join forces to try to for to try to uh take down evil if you will yeah <laughs> so hopefully we'll pick up where we left off hopefully she won't get back behind the curtain i mean if we learned anything in season two they there is life after the tube so hopefully we get out of the tube i mean i wonder if are we just asleep in there i don't even know this is the other part i try not to ask too many questions because i don't want to reveal anything that i'm not supposed to so i don't even know what our what our state is in those tubes <laughs> it's kind of like harvesting in a way i think is that that kind of the i think so too yeah <laughs> i love the three aliens together though like i love alien tina and alien victor and alien stacy all just sitting in that room together i think it's so great i can't wait to see what happens with them i mean i bet they had so much fun playing like an alien right <laughs> So much fun. And then, you know, um, James, uh, who plays my husband, who plays Victor on the show, he did a lot of work with Julian to get his mannerisms and to get his kind of cadence in his speech. I think he did such an, such a great job. And one day I asked him, I was like, who are you right now? I said, are you Victor or are you Jonah? And he looked at me like I'd like kicked a puppy. And I was like, no, no, I'm kidding. I'm just totally kidding. It's okay. <laughs> It's difficult though because you all seem like really nice people and that you have to play real like big villains, don't you? I know. I have to say I've noticed that a lot. Like usually the nicest people are the ones they hire to play the the real villains. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's been true. Like on Handmaid's Tale, Anne Dowd, who couldn't be a more lovely person, plays on Lydia, who's just like couldn't be couldn't be scarier. So it's yeah. There's something there's something to it. Yeah, uh, just briefly talking about Handmaid's Tale. So, what's it like on set? Because it, it is quite a tough show, isn't it? It's a very tough show. Do you guys have that there? We do. Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah, it's a very tough show, but I think it. You know, not maybe a Tulu has a good job at arranging at, at, at casting. <laughs> um, that too is just a great. It's an exceptional group of people who really shows up and and gets to work and has the ability to laugh and loosen up between takes, but. You know, it's uh, it's a great set. I love being on that set. It's one show where, like, at the end of the day, I do kind of feel like I need a hug and a nice glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. Yeah. And to just go back to the real world. Like, it's still there sort of thing. Back to the real world. Exactly. <laughs> We're still here. I can still make a phone call. I don't have to wear teal. I can yeah. read. Yeah. Uh, so for your character in the next series, would you like to see her? Because obviously Serena sort of took a stand, didn't she? Would you kind of like to see her join Serena? Or I would love it. I would. There's a couple things that I would hope for that God, goodness knows. No, see, I don't even want to say God knows because I'm talking about Hammond's Tale. Goodness knows it will happen. <laughs> but like, I would love to see a backstory for Naomi. I'd love to see who she was before it was Gilead. And yeah, I would like to see her stand side by side with Serena for sure. Definitely. And are you going to be reading this? But I this? can't tell you anything. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are they as bad as Marvel? <laughs> they, um, 
No, they're not. No, no one is as strict as Marvel because I think that Marvel has to deal with like a very unique fan base that you cannot let your guard down with. And I think our Handmaid's Tale is just sort of understood to keep your mouth shut about what the shows are about. But no, it's very different. No, Marvel, I have my own Marvel email and all that stuff. Ooh. <laughs> on i yeah. know <laughs> nice so are you going to be reading the sequel to the handmaid's tale because they've just announced the new book haven't they i can't wait i'm not when does it come out this year or next um i think it's late I this can't year or, or early next year yes i'll definitely read the sequel i can't wait i can't wait i plowed through the first one a couple times when i got that was a show that when i got it i did pick the book up and reread it because i hadn't read it for years <laughs> well it's difficult now because you've gone past the source material haven't you way past the source material but but still the source material i think is the foundation you know i think margaret atwood really laid the groundwork for the world and now um bruce miller is brilliantly running with it definitely so the final question um what's next for you obviously handmade well hopefully handmaid's tale handmaids yeah we've begun filming i've done one episode i'm supposed to go back next month and do another um and then hopefully you know season three of runaways would start late spring early summer (laughs) <laughs> or fall. I don't know if I'm allowed to say when it would start. Sometime this year, it would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. So just all the fans get on social media. And then you media. know, I have two young, I have two young kids, and so I've really I've been doing this. I've been acting a long time, and the most valuable piece I, of advice I was ever given is to really enjoy your downtime, and so that's what I'm trying to do. With a glass of wine after Handmaid's Tale. With a glass of wine, right? Or with my kids at the park and a cup of coffee. But, yeah, no, I'm really just trying to enjoy the downtime because when it's busy, it is it is really busy. So it's been very – I have all of January off, which has been amazing. Oh, fantastic. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Thank um, you for letting me say spoilers so I didn't I wasn't anxious. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I fingers crossed that Runaways gets picked up for season 3. I fingers crossed it happens 